Hello and welcome. Now today I continue with the assembly of the Sid Boom box. We're coming close to the end of this huge project, which was much more involved than I initially thought. A lot of hard work, but well worth it, that's for sure. As you will see for yourselves in the upcoming videos in this series, and uh, while saying that, I'm gonna say no more until you see it. <laughs> I'm not gonna ruin the surprise. Well, don't forget to check out PCBWay if you're looking for custom PCBWay circuit building. I checked out their PCBs and found them to be of excellent quality, and I'm indeed considering them for a future project sometime. And judging by just how surprisingly fast the goodie box with their PCBs got to me, I know they have a fast service. So now I'm putting these um, buttons in here, I'm going to install them, they're a bit loose on the thing, but it's because yeah, I've got the back thing. What I'm going to use is a bit of hot glue, because hot glue, um, this works well with hot glue, the um, printouts. And once I've hot glued them, I'm going to join all the grounds, all the plus felts together. I was expecting to be done with this project within two to three months. I had no idea I'd still be doing this now. It just goes to show theory versus practice. When you're spending so much time and effort doing a project like this, you start feeling the excitement and a huge sense of accomplishment at the smallest things that start coming together. Even if it's just these set box control lights being illuminated for the first time. It was just great to see it and it cannot be helped. After all, isn't it the little things in life that make it worthwhile? I'm drilling the hole and installing the DIN socket. This is to be able to connect to an external tape deck, you know, to this and record from the SID boombox. Also, cutting out the slot for the SD card socket. I must admit, I'm not really that good at this kind of work. Electronics I can do, but when it comes to putting up shelves, drilling holes and so forth, and cutting pieces of wood straight, I end up doing it a bit wonky. So thankfully I got it straight this time. At least, let's hope this means I'm improving. Now to test the SD card extender with the SID box to see if it works, and thankfully yes, it does. Every little thing needs to be tested. I want to iron out every little bug in this and make sure everything works. Here I am soldering the speaker terminals onto the circuit. With Milliput I'm going to mold a shape which is going to secure the speaker terminals. I love working with Milliput actually, or for those of you who do not know what it is, it's epoxy putty which turns rock solid once it's dried. Most of what I used hot glue on, I secured with epoxy putty also, just for that stability. Hot glue has its place and uses, but I tend to use it as a temporary mock-up adhesive. Once finalized, I either screw whatever it is into place, or just use milliput. Now with the symbols, I got them raised when 3D printing them. You can feel them, but they are a bit difficult to see. So what I did was I used paint marker to color the raised symbols. 
Once dried, I used the top coat on them to seal the paint marker in. So there is no chance, or at least less chance, for the paint to get chipped, scrubbed, or even scratched off. It looks freaking great though. I'm happy with the final result. So what I've been doing here is putting the incandescent lights on from the back. Um, just, I mean, this is going to be running on AC 14 volts, so I've just put um, a 47 ohm resistor on each uh, in series, just to kind of like limit the current. I'm going to keep these going long, and it's a really nice warm glow. Let me connect them for now on my DC bench power supply. Gorgeous, nice, gorgeous, and backlit. I like that. What I'm going to do is put two extra ones at the bottom and then, you know, put a switch on those, you know, just so they'll be the ones that are DC on the battery. So, you know, if you want on battery power, you know, you can just like choose to switch it on or off just to save battery power. Even though these don't actually use that much power. I mean, literally, if you were to run them at 12 volts DC from my, um, I think it's just using. 30 milliamps each for each um, bulb, which to be honest is not that bad. It's almost like one one LED is kind of like that. So these two are going to be the AC ones, so the DC ones, as I said, the switched ones are going to be here. So I'll put them on. So these are all four of them on here and if I just take off the glare here you can see how nice it looks. There. There's some illuminating, there's two illuminating in the back and there's two illuminating up. What I'm going to do is these two here are going to be the AC ones, the primary ones. When you know you, you connect it via mains then these two will be the ones that light up. I mean they'll all light up if you choose them to. but. Once the battery is on, these are going to be DC ones. So further up in the, um, you know, they're going to be powered via the normal way, the DC way. So when it sets to battery, these two will not work because obviously they, with the AC supply, these two will work only on battery if you choose them to. I'm going to put a switch on them. That is all for today. There will be a couple more assembly videos before the grand finale video where I demonstrate all the things that Boombox can do. Thanks for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. I wish to say a big thank you to all my patrons, especially my top tier patrons. 
Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Carboot, Aaron Metcalf, Camel Tech, and Chris Sevelinsky. <laughs>